Hello from Boom Millennial, the podcast where every week Lauren Marsicano and her dad, Tom Mano, discuss the generational gaps. So join them, have some fun learning about yourself and what makes us all tick, and the keys to bringing it all together, the similarities and the differences. That's Boom Millennial, the podcast, right here on Apple. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Boom Millennial, the podcast, where every week we talk about the generational gaps, the pluses, the minuses, just talking about you, our familia. And here today is Lauren Marsicano, a.k.a. Woo! Yeah, the networking maverick. And me, I'm Tom Mano, a.k.a. Faja. Faja. You're my, my dad. Yeah. That's my dad. <laughs> That's yeah. Natasha. Yeah. And we're so excited to be here. This is uh, podcast number five. Can you believe yeah. it? A yeah, high five, five for that. High five, five the screen. Whatever <laughs> way that goes. <laughs> which, yeah, which way are you going? But. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really, really exciting. Uh, and uh, again, I think uh, you were reminding me that we, we did get some good feedback and uh, some questions about uh, what we can do or not questions, but some ideas about what we can talk about in the, in the future. So uh, it's very, very, very exciting. Um, I'm so proud of you and everything that you've been doing on this Faja, because you've really taken, you've really taken it in stride and running forward. I know this was like a crazy idea that I kind of wanted to do with us. And I'm so proud of you and us and everything we're doing and our coaches, Melissa and Stephanie uh, Carcace, who got us here and got us through to this point. Yeah. Worth it. Yeah, <laughs> it sure was. Hey, uh, you know, before we get started, we, we do have to do a disclaimer. Always, we always have to do. Always have to do a disclaimer. And I have before me the disclaimer that I <laughs> The following is brought to you as a disclaimer for Boom Millennial, the podcast, where the hosts cannot be held accountable for any of their opinions. And the topics are at the sole discretion of the hosts for those podcasts. Thank you and enjoy. Prayer hands, prayer hands. Hashtag lawyered. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you don't want to get insulted or you don't want to have any feels, Turn it off now. Turn it off now. Sometimes we discuss controversial topics, right? So I got some feedback um, from some of my friends about how uh, we are, we were a little a little controversial a little bit um, on the last episode about the Vogue articles disagreeing with Vogue. How dare we? How dare we in the the episode two, episode three when we were, I know I was like what whatever Vogue <laughs> episode three the last one uh, that's airing now I'm excited to see what they're gonna say so we have officially the two episodes out at this point yeah and, that's and great going forward yeah, that's great yeah it's very it is very exciting and uh, it's very different than I thought it was going to be uh, but uh, you know you always help pull me through so. I'm, I'm very excited to be able to do this. And we're filming in, the, in our studio here in Eureka, <laughs> Missouri. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know. You're so far now. You guys are just so yeah. far. Yeah, yeah. But it's okay. We can still do the podcast and you can come right. visit me in Florida. It's fine. Yeah, or VC Vicey. Eh, Florida's <laughs> better. Florida's better year round. <laughs> well, there's, there's some truth to that. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing that keeps me coming back every week is the dad jokes. I want to hear what's the, what's the dad joke. I always got to have some humor. We got to start with some humor. Well, uh, I don't think this is much of a joke as it is a true story. Oh, almost. So this is, uh, you, you know, mom, <laughs> mom is a very, very calm uh, individual. She takes great pride and being very calm during is that the joke time. is this the joke no <laughs> was that the joke i thought that well i was like oh we're, we're it's a story no. mom what i mean she's great under pressure we're great under pressure yeah, but yeah, she is. Oh, and, i don't know if I'd, I'd consider like buddha like you know what i mean like she's great under yeah there's pressure. Very, very few things that get her furious besides being oh, 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 but you right. know just That's things true. that get her furious so we're walking oh, on the, this is when we were back in Florida, we were walking on the, on the beach uh, one night, beautiful sunset, 
and she is just beside herself. She's furious. And I said, uh, I said, Charlie, what's wrong? Charlie, that's, that's her yeah, nickname. That? Oh, yeah, that's, that's, a, name. that's a long story. Well, it's about her, the perfume that she wore when we mm -hmm. met Charlie. And blah. so anyway, I said, Charlie, I said, well, what's, what's going on? And she said, this phone is just driving me crazy. And I said, well, what seems to be the problem? She says, well, every time I get on, it tells me I have to sync it. I said, really? So I grabbed her phone and threw it in the ocean. <laughs> but um, bum. But um. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, if you ever did that with our phones, that would probably be like the end of my life. Like my whole life is on there. I, I have the yeah. insurance though. So because we're today we're talking about careers and growing up. And growing up, I didn't have this technology when I was first growing up. So I'm sure you didn't, but I want to talk about different things about career and growing up as it relates to different generations. So for instance, our work history, how you you know got into your career or home movies, home the, any kind of schooling, fast food, shopping, gaming, yeah. the differences in the generations as we're growing up and in our careers. Yeah, well, uh, I'll, I'll get started. Uh, Please. It, it, uh, I was very fortunate because uh, uh, Pop Pop, uh, was very, uh, very involved in the community. And my, I think my, besides work, well, my first real job that I got paid for from Nana, not from the company, was she, uh, she worked in a retail store in Perth Amboy, New Jersey. And I would, I would go after school a couple of days a week on a weekend. And she had different tasks for me to do. For example, I would make back in the day, everything was boxed up. When you bought something, it was boxed and wrapped. It was really the cool. The presentation, yeah. The presentation was what it's mm. what was all about, and there was no that additional cost to it. You didn't have to wait in line, get the receipt, uh, and then of course, you know, doing the odd odd jobs like cleaning the basement, uh, cleaning the the bathroom. Every time I worked, I had duties pre opening, post opening. They called it a vestibule back in the day. A vestibule was sort of the lobby. That fancy. Yeah, before you walked in. Uh, and opened the door to the store, it was, there was a vestibule. So you had to clean that down because it was all about the impre your first impression uh, walking in. So that was sort of the first job. I don't remember, 50 cents an hour, whatever, yes. whatever it was. Vestibule, sounds so funny. Vestibule, yeah, sounds so pretty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, after that, I, uh, I was always interested in sports because of pop up, uh, pop up's background in baseball, and then he got me a job as a as a supervisor in the park, which was literally a couple hundred yards from uh, from our house, right down the path. So I I got uh, a little bit of an education there, and actually got paid by uh, Edison uh, Edison Public Park, park wow. Department, yeah, Park Department. So I started there and it was really interesting because I really worked with younger, younger people, but I don't know. I was, I was 16 years old, maybe 15. Oh my gosh. I you had to get a work permit back in the day. I don't know what it's like today, but getting a work permit at 15, 15 and a half, you had to take all kinds of tests and things like that. So that was, uh, that was sort of my, my real first job. But I think the idea was you had to go after it. You had to, and you really do, and I think it's similar today. It's, it's sometimes it's not what you know, it's who you know. Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah, I, I think that, and what you do in your world, you're networking and uh, staying in touch with people uh, who you can help and they can help you in a quid pro quo manner. Uh, so I, I was very blessed. So that, that was sort of uh, how I got started. And then I got a job through my aunt. See, it's all familiar. Oh, it's all the yeah. familia, the familia, yeah. the aunt. It was, it was called the Mosquito Commission. So, and it wasn't like a bunch of mosquitoes sat around the table and talked. It was the Mosquito oh, Commission. I thought they would just like buzz around. Like, yeah, mosquitoes. they just, <laughs> the, uh, you went out and you had to spray a, uh, uh, a chemical. Like a repellent or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, but it was a chemical. And probably today they don't even That's use it. Probably but I remember, it. I remember the name. It was Rothane and oil. And you had to mix it. The oil kept the chemical on top because the larvae would come up to the top of oh the water. God. And that's how you, uh, 
unfortunately kill them. But uh, mm-hmm. so we did that. I had a 50 pound tank on my back and we would go in the woods and spray. Oh, I'm picturing oh. like Ghostbusters. Was it like, I'm picturing like a Ghostbusters backpack and sprayer. And like, yeah. I ain't afraid yeah. no mosquitoes. Yeah. And now, you know, and then, of course, if you were really up on top of a ladder, you got to ride, which I never did. You got to ride in the truck that sprayed the neighborhoods. I don't know if I don't know if you ever remember that. bad for like, yeah, well, I I don't lives. it's like in the farms where the plane comes in and sprays. That's that's what I'm thinking. All those vehicles, but you're doing it in a neighborhood with people. we, they used to drive in the neighborhoods and wow. you know the kids would come out and go <gasps> <laughs> and we did all of this by the way no masks no oh of know, course not of no course club. not no, we were just out there so. oh, of course anyway not. corporations so, didn't give a crap <laughs> that, <laughs> they're like hey could, you're fine suck it up yeah, yeah that could be why i have wow. some of the problems i have today <laughs> You know they got yeah. they got warnings and disclaimers now but yeah yeah well we already did ours but anyway so <laughs> uh, what, what about you i i i want to recall back to some of your uh some of your jobs were interesting well i think so first of all i didn't know mosquitoes were a huge problem in new jersey that is that's a yeah. lot for because yeah. i expected in florida like in miami and i've never seen that so i don't know if it still happens like i've never seen mosquito sprayers but mosquitoes always love me mom always said it's because i was so sweet that's nice <laughs> True Thanks, <that>. mom. <laughs> but wow i just can't even imagine doing those kind of jobs so i'm i don't know if you remember i'm sure you do more probably more than me my first memory of getting paid anything aside from like chores at home was when we lived in missouri and you were you were running the ritz carlton Right. And uh, you would allow me, you know, on weekends or in the summer when we had time off to come in and work odd jobs in the in the industry, in the hotel. So like, you know, I would right. maybe help the security guards. I was helping the pastry chefs at one point. I was helping the yeah. chefs. I was helping housekeeping. I would help right. make deliveries. I would help the front desk. Like, so I was doing all the front of the house and back of the house roles. That's right. Um, but you were paying me. The hotel wasn't paying me. And technically, I wasn't really doing a job job, but I was like shadowing sort of. But right. that was right. my own responsibility. I had to show up on right. time. I came into work with you super freaking early. <laughs> I remember even as a small child, I remember it being like before the sun rose. <laughs> it was it, early. <laughs> you, went, you went in early. And I remember being exhausted by the time we left but I loved working it I loved working that job learning all the different tasks that go into the business and the hotel industry I thought it was super amazing yeah and I think one of the takeaways for anybody listening to this in terms of whatever job you had your the one thing that you have always had was a curiosity you know it was why do we do this why do we it, it was it was really yeah. phenomenal yeah. and i think that's that's something that people should take to heart if you're curious about your job uh, you can learn a lot more people are more willing to share uh, because you're asking the why the why question is really uh, fundamentally a good one and then uh, your some of the traits that you had were you showed up on time you did what you were asked you were I respectful had to show up on time i was with you no. <laughs> That's true. I you had were to. There was no other choice. Yeah, you're respectful of other people. Uh, you listened. That's another thing. You know, besides being curious, you have to have a good listening skill. You have to be able to communicate. Uh, so that you always, you always, you know. And I know this is a father daughter thing, and uh, you know, uh, we, we want to talk about us. Uh, but uh, there are lots of things that you did well, and that was even noted by other people on the staff. You know, uh, and both you and your sister, no matter what jobs you've had in anything that I've been involved with, one of the things they always talked about was you had great manners, very respectful, and always very, very curious. So that's that's something that a lot of people can take away. I think, so there, there was a, I think the curiosity, curiosity is a huge thing with any jobs, with anything yeah, you're going to do. So. There, uh, there's a, another uh, what what other one were you thinking of? Another job? So the first, so uh, let me, let's just throw out a disclaimer here. Mom always said, as long as we got straight A's, if we kept a straight A average, right. we didn't have to have an actual job. 
Like we didn't have to go out and work at the Dairy Queen. We didn't have to go do anything during, you know, through basically uh -huh. through high school. So uh -huh. as long as we were doing all of our sports and I was doing straight A's and I was doing, you know, extracurriculars and everything like that and getting, I, I didn't have to get a part-time job, but as soon as it slipped, I was told I would be getting a, a part-time job. <laughs> so I was very motivated to not have to get a part-time job. But once I graduated, the first uh, real trip I remember paying for was for Italy. And I worked at, uh, as a golf cart girl for a summer at the property of Lansdowne, Virginia. Right. That's right. As an you official, did. like a legit employee. Like I was W-2, paid taxes, everything. You know, and you interviewed as a Marsicano, not a Mano. That's true. Uh, and yeah. and uh, you went in and you didn't uh, tell the HR director knew that, you know, you were related. Uh, but people that were doing the interview, you had to take the tests and uh, yeah. do all of that. Uh, so you did that uh, under the guise of, well, Marsicano, not not a man. Me. As just yeah. me. But yeah. uh, there's a, there's a there's a couple of stories that you have with regard to the golfers and and how you oh, yeah. you know you were always known for upselling and uh, <laughs> do you have any stories around that yeah well I always so first of all no matter what I do in life even though I consider myself more of an ambivert I always like making other people happy making them feel great making them have an experience which is very businessy as well when you want customers to come back you want them to feel good and have an experience and something oh. you had taught me from like a very young age was about like networking and knowing the customers, but also just, you know, making friends. And while I was a golf cart girl, I actually kept a notebook, a hand notebook, not in my, not on my phone. I didn't have notes in my phone at that time. So I actually had a physical notebook and pen that I would bring with me every day. And a lot of at golf clubs, if you've never, if you've never been to a golf club uh, or been a member, they have memberships, right? So a lot of times you'll see the same people coming back, several times a week, uh, you know, but at least once a week, usually at their, like their tea time, those days. And I was working pretty much every day. I was doing as many shifts as possible because I was trying to pay for Italy because I had to pay for it on my own. Um, and so I keep it, I would keep a notebook and I would mark down, you know, they give you the schedule at the beginning of the day. And I would go through the notebook and I would see, did I ever serve any of these people before? And then I would have what they ordered from me their preferred sandwiches, their preferred, you know, uh, drinks, if they had it, did they buy alcohol from me? Cigars. Cigars. So I would upsell the cigars. So that's where the upsell came from because I knew our margin uh, was bigger on cigars and alcohol, obviously. Right. So right. my goal was to get the more tips and you get a percentage based on sales uh, a lot of time as a golf cart girl. So if I could sell more alcohol and cigars, not only do they have a better time, but I have a better time. And I would say, you know, for the ones that I knew that were very genial and, and not like to the book, you know, cause there's some people that really just want to keep score and want you to sign for them. And you got to know those people, but there are others that just kind of want to have fun. And I'd be like, Oh, well, if you get uh, you know, a beer, you get a mulligan, you get a do over. And if you get a cigar, everyone gets a mulligan, right? Everyone, the whole team. And if you get a hole in one, you gotta buy cigars and beer for everyone. And I'll sign your card for you. I'll sign it. For your whole one. So that was, you know, some of the upselling, but a lot of them really appreciated remembering their name, remembering their family. I had taken notes on, you know, their families, if I had met their wife or yeah. if they had mentioned anything, that was huge. So for me, that was the biggest thing I learned that I still take with me to this day with networking and building businesses. Yeah. And I think that's the key. You, you know, we always talk about uh, our generational differences and similarities. There's a similarity there where creating relationships, especially in the sales side and the networking side, creating those relationships, the concept of that follows through in every generation. And the relationships don't necessarily have to be about sales. It can just be about family. It can be about friends. It can be about helping people. It can be all the things that, uh, they, a lot of things that you've been, uh, been involved in. So I, I think the things that we've just talked about are transferable through any generation, any generation. So I think that's pretty cool. And hey, I think speaking. nowadays, well, nowadays, I just wanted to mention for the newer generations, a lot of them are having their first job as influencers or ambassadors for brands and affiliates. Yeah. So there's a lot more social influence going on. Uh, you know, they still have to be a certain age to do it, but a lot of them, that is, they're becoming TikTok famous, Instagram famous, 
making brand deals like Charlie yeah. D'Amelio on TikTok, very young. I think she was like 16 when she started on TikTok and blew up and got brand deals and now makes, you know, millions of dollars supposedly, but that's yeah. all just from TikTok and just doing like TikTok dances. Yeah. Unbelievable. Hey, speaking about TikTok. Oh, the TikTok. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of the subjects that we wanted to cover was uh, about movie, movie making. Yes, uh, movies. You know, family movies, uh, real home movies. movies. Yeah. yeah, home uh, home movies. And um, I, I just, as we were talking about it yesterday, it just reminded me that back in my parents' day and grandparents' day, they uh, had photo albums. Yeah. And uh, there were individual shots that uh, you took someplace to get developed <laughs> where, where no. you know, could have been drugstores at the time or whatever. Yeah. Fast forward, you know, Kodak got in, involved and then there were color shots. And, uh, and then there was something called, uh, uh, as you move forward, something called slides. So in, in the business. Oh, the, like the projector slides? Yeah. Like those projector ones? Slides. Oh. So we use those in in business, but families had them as well. And then you talk about the movies before Al Jolson, who did the first talkie, there were, there the were movies. Were, yeah, the talkies. There was, there was, the movies were, the real movies in, well, the in movie movies, theaters right? were yeah. silent movies. Mm, that's right. And that's they like had- Like Groucho a, Marx and stuff? Like, uh, uh, well, I- Was it like Charlie Chaplin? Been, Charlie Chaplin would have been, would have been somebody. Uh, but uh, then all of a sudden the talkies took place. But in the silent movies, in the movie, th I, I don't know this to be true, but I've read about it. That ah, if, you went, okay, sure. if you went to the movies, they had a piano player playing. Oh, that's right. That, I've movie. seen that in movies. <laughs> right. And closed caption, I think, actually started during the silent movies oh, because they would it. say something and it would go across to the piano player would play or the organ player would play. Yeah. And then uh, going going to the movies uh, became more, more entertainment. But back to home movies, if you recall, uh, before we got into movies, there was the, there was the, the projector, like Thomas Edison did this oh, whole Oh yeah, the, this thing. So, right, yeah. So there, not only for, not only for the movie movies, but for home movies. For home movies. And there was something called eight millimeter, which was black and white, no sound. And then 16 millimeter, I think, came in and that was color. And then sound started coming a, a little bit, but you had to have the, the microphone attached to the, to the camera. So yes. it, was a, it was a little little bit, bit more technical. And then uh, I don't know if this is the right sequence, but you remember with the, the, the VHS, the home movies, like the Disney movies. I remember, we the, cam I remember the camcorders. I remember you camcorder, having a yeah, camcorder. But yeah, camcorder was... When you were taking movies, you'd open it yeah, up. You see the movie, that. right? And but before that, for mo home movies, there was something from the movie theaters. There was something called VHS. So a movie would go out into the movie theaters, and then mar from a marketing point of view, they started selling the movie to uh, people at home, and they had what was called VHS. And then oh, there was yes, a, like our Disney boxes, like the right. Disney boxes. And yeah, stuff that like that. Or like at Blockbuster later. Right. So the movies went out six months later, whatever, marketing to make more if money. If you don't know what a VHS is, it's something if, <laughs> like picture your streaming service, but on a physical contraption that you right. have to rewind if you want to see it again before yeah. returning it to its box. Right. That's where Blockbuster became really big yeah. yeah and there's a, i understand there's only one left in the country <laughs> there was well there was a netflix documentary on it that was really interesting yeah it was really the last blockbuster but i think that that one's even gone now yeah so now there's a there's a whole business around how to take those home movies and try to put and then came what dvds and see you know DVDs. i don't even remember home so really in my mind for home movies it went from christmas morning camcorder where we couldn't come down and do anything until the camcorder was ready and we heard right. santa claus come with, ho, ho, ho. with uh, that was the yeah that was the first memory of like a home movie i had and right. then in my mind for whatever reason it jumps from camcorder to my cell phone <laughs> Like there's nothing in between. There was camcorder yeah. and then there was our cell phones being able to take video and that's it. That's like yeah. the only two things I remember. 
I honestly don't understand how you guys had silent movies <laughs> to me because you're not yeah. capturing like the vibe. You're not really capturing the vibe of what's going on without the without the music. We don't get at home piano players when when you're going to play back a, a home movie silently. Right. So you're, yeah. you're missing like half of the action. And some of my favorite stuff when we watch the home movies back is you off camera saying something and mom talking to you. <laughs> So you'd Correct. miss all of that. You'd miss all of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and again, when you go back to, you, we have albums at home, uh, photo albums. And- uh, Those are, and, now we call it scrapbooking. Yeah, became, became scrapbooking. But we, we look at those pictures now and, and, and I heard what you said, but even in the eight millimeter, 16 millimeter before sound, you sort of got an idea because everybody would play uh, would play through the camera. So there was something that, oh, you, you know, they- so you sort of knew where it was. And if you were showing those movies back at home, you sort of narrated. So you became uh, a narrator. Oh, you remember oh. this and remember that. Oh, here's where we were. And, and then if we were explaining to you guys, then we would narrate it from our, our perspective. So I think that was kind of a, a fun thing uh, that now is, you know, sort of a, a lot different with the, uh, uh, with the iPhones or whatever phone you're using to create. Now you create albums. Yeah. Uh, you can uh, people Great are making reels. movies i mean yes. youtube people have their own movies Viva now video. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah oh yeah people are, are studio quality some of them yeah from yeah. just their cell phone or tablets at home because yeah. we have so many uh products but yeah. now that now we discuss movies i know we had a couple topics we kind of also wanted to discuss about growing up between like schooling fast food shopping and gaming but I'd love for you to pick one of them, one of them and discuss it. And then I'll pick one and we'll, and we'll discuss that too. We'll discuss one of yours and one of mine. So between okay. schooling, fast food, shopping and gaming. And if you want to see an extended version, you can let us know online. We'll do maybe a live stream of it. If you want us to, to do it and extend the topic out. Okay. Uh, you at home, the podcast familia, if you want to hear right. it. That's so great. Which one, which topic do you want to do? Uh, well, I'll talk about schools because Ooh, I think- schools. The experience that kids are having today, uh, they can measure that up against uh, the schooling the way we had it. There might be some similarities. There, there might be some uh, differences. Uh, but when I grew up, I only lived two blocks away from the school. And a lot of schools were developed back in the 30s, 40s, 50s for neighborhoods. Uh, now I think it's based on land and you know making yeah, population a, a density and yeah, yeah. that kind of thing. But before it was a school was in That's a neighborhood, right. so it, we uh, you know we walked to school. We I don't know. Mom and I were talking about this the other day. They used to have what was called safety patrol. Did you ever hear? Did you? Oh, I mean, <laughs> we have like those crossing guards still. I see them you know, helping with like helping with like the kids and but, all that. But those are adults, right? Yes. Most yeah, of those, those are adults. adults. Well, back in the day we had the safety patrol. So first of all, you had to be an A student. So I was never- Oh, it was on. students? It was students. Students. And they no. had they had like a little thing, a white, you know- Oh, like a, like a hall monitor. They were like the right? hall monitors from like the and old the, TV and the, shows? And the badge. And, and they had no, the badge. No, an yeah, official had, badge. Yeah, you had- Oh my God, I student. totally would have been this. I would have been such this person. <laughs> <laughs> I love enforcing well, rules. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Well, I never made it because my, grade, them my, my, my grades weren't there. So I never became it was safe. Anyway, so the, the kids were on a safety patrol. You were interviewed, I guess, and you went through the process and you had to have the right grades. And so when you cross the street. So now you have crossing yeah. guards, which are uh, I, I assume volunteer adults. Yeah. That help. They put up the stop sign. Yeah, usually, you know. it's like the parents trade off with like the PTO time because they have to like volunteer or whatever. Right. So that's how we got to school, and then everything was a lineup. Like I felt like later on when I was with Fritz Carlton, we did lineups. So in, oh. in in elementary school, we did. So you lined up. The teacher, you. I mean, you couldn't talk. You didn't whisper. I mean, you'd always get in trouble. But I you, you could get talk. In trouble, yeah. And they would take the role as you were coming in. You sat down, uh, you know, they had the, like, like they do today, they have their tables and chairs. I don't know, back in the day, the table and chair was connected. Oh, I don't we know still if, have that. They have not yeah. innovated that in a hundred uh, years, I feel like. So, that is something that is ripe. Anyone watching this, 
That is a ripe innovation for our educational system because yeah. those are the most annoying things in the world where you put the books under the seat too and it's all like metal and then a wooden table and then if so someone like, three years prior dug into it, that's just there, you know? Well, back when I went to school, they were made out of wood, not laminate. Oh my so, God. So people would carve in, you know. Oh, saying um, I'm sure. Love um, letters. Love, love letters to um, the next year. Loves NKM or, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then we had an ink well. An ink well. Because ba- if you look at old movies. Like a well where you just like, go into ink? Literally a, where you would put a bottle of ink. No, like the feather pens? Well, like back old feather pens. The, this must were you in, were you in Shakespeare? Mm-hmm. I feel like now you're oh. discussing Shakespeare times. No, no, no. This is before. I mean, the, but it was still being built. It was being built the same way. Wow. So you had a spot there for ink, and you had a spot for your pens or pencils, or and then it would open up. Uh, did yours open up too? Your uh, oh, I think I did have a couple of desks that yeah, opened up. And they were made of wood and you would yeah. open it up and that's where you kept your books and your pens. And, you know, before school started, we went out and shopped for the book pencil and the sharpener and things like that. But the, the thing that really changed in my mind, because I did uh, I did graduate uh, to be able to teach uh, teach K through 12 uh, oh, in, nice. in any any in any, uh, in any grade level and in any subject, because I did do some substitute teaching. Oh, but my, my so point fun, was, back when I was in school, discipline was very, very strict. You, uh, you oh, came in, you sat down, you were quiet. The teacher walked in, everybody stood up. And then you sat down, he or she would take roll call. Uh, there was no, I mean, you couldn't, a lot of a lot of crazy stuff happened. Don't get me wrong, but the concept was discipline. Yeah. And then fast forward, I don't know how many years later, I I was uh, I did some teaching, and the the kids were kids. It wasn't quite as disciplined. And then fast forward another few years, and I did some substitute te- teaching at a high school level. Oh so no. So th- this oh, was no. up in Northern Jersey where I was doing some work. Uh, I had a part-time job. So they asked me to do some substitute. I did this one day. I went in, it was a high school. I went in, it was absolute chaos. I walked in, it was like I was the invisible man. So (laughs) honest, honest, it was like, you know, and then uh, I think the thing was when you were a substitute, I mean, all bets were off. Oh yeah. So yeah, I mean, there Those was no our field days. Those were our field oh, days. For, for so I, I still remember this to this day. It was Vernon High School in Vernon, New Jersey. I walked into the administrator's office and I said, I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity, but I would appreciate you not ever calling me again. <laughs> <laughs> but and lose the, my number. Lose my I, number. And I never substituted. <gasps> yeah. Oh, my so gosh. That's, but uh, I think there's some things in school. I think it's similar. It's similar. Yeah. There's, I think it's similar nowadays. And I think it really depends on where you're in school because there's private schools, there's public schools, there's Catholic schools. So each yeah. of them are going to have a different varying level of like discipline and organization. Yeah. And I even taught uh, some, uh, some, uh, uh, some classes at college level for uh those are probably more for for the for the hotel so i was a guest speaker so that's right you know it wasn't i was with them every day and i would come in as a guest speaker they were a little bit more tolerant i think but it was interesting because you know me and if people aren't paying attention i'm hey over here i'm talking to you i'm talking to you over here (laughs) I, i still remember you know now with the phones the kids are in the back and they're like you know well what are you talking about and you know so every once in a while so you're the invisible man again yeah, but I would call them out. <laughs> oh. So I said, is there anything on the phone that you'd like to share with the class? <laughs> so anyway, that's... Uh, Got him. Got that's him. Some crazy stuff. Well, you know, school. as a substitute teacher, you can always do, when you were doing substitute teaching, we were always afraid to be bad when we knew the substitute teachers that would leave notes for the teacher, for the real teacher. They'd be like, so the substitute teacher left us a note. And if oh. we were bad, we would get in trouble by the real teacher. So that's how yeah. you get the revenge. I yeah, I didn't I didn't think about that one. <laughs> yeah, that's how you what get about it. You? What's, how you get what's uh, what category topic would you like? Ooh, to talk about? 
So I would love to discuss gaming. Gaming. Wow. Gaming is something near and dear to my heart. So for those that don't know me or know my husband, Sebastian, he makes video games. He makes virtual reality, 2D games, all all sorts of video games. So he's much cooler than me. Uh, (laughs) And it's more fun, right? Because I I grew up playing video games as well. So I love video games. We also uh, play a lot of board games. So that's something I remember growing up, even before Sebastian and I you know, got together, I remember us every year for Christmas, that was our big thing. We would play a new board game. Mom and you would give us, or Santa would give us a new board game and we as a family would play it. Now, as I've gotten more into the gaming industry, what I will tell you is Monopoly, sorry, categories, all that stuff is like considered like oh like oh you play family games like oh, okay you're a family gamer but you don't play real games and that's what something i was like what i have played board games forever what do you mean and right. they're like okay but have you ever played you know uh, risk legacy or have you ever played pandemic or have you ever played Car- carcassonne or whatever i can't pronounce these some of these board game names uh but We really got into it because uh, some of the bigger gaming influencers are down here in South Florida and we would meet up with Mm -hmm. them and we actually got to test games before they came out, which is really cool. Um, But video games is definitely something I would say is more for my generation. Like that's a my generation thing. I know Atari kind of came out in your generation though. Right, right. Around that around that time, like the 50s or 60s. When did it come out? You know, Um, I'm not sure. I have to look it up. I'd have to look it up, but I, I know video games started back then, but really took off Nintendo. Nintendo was huge. Uh, I remember playing PlayStation with Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot PlayStation was like my jam. Right. I always would play it whenever I had some, you know, basement time, essentially. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, right. But it's something that's really big for our lives now. We play a lot of video games. We play a lot of board games. I'm helping see the back end. I help with the, you know, the back end of it and design. Like he, we brainstorm strategy. Um, but I think that that's something from back in the day, which is what I want to know from you. So back in the day, board gaming or gaming, what was it like? Because I'm assuming you didn't even have, I have also, if you can see up here, I have Sonic the Hedgehog, my Sega. Oh yeah. That we got when we went to New York, because that's where they have the Nintendo store in the U S. Yeah. So we love that. That's that's a big part of like my, my growing up in my childhood was video games. Yeah. Well, it's interesting to, uh, (laughs) Elizabeth became a doctor. I don't know if she ever played with that game that you would. I don't, the, she did Game the, Boy. I, she was Game Boy. Oh, she was Game Boy. But yeah. you, there, there was this thing before all this fancy stuff came out. There was this, something called the doctor where you would. Oh, have operation. Operation, right? <laughs> it's still around. Where, oh, is it? Oh, yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> and then there was uh, uh, sports games were I, I still remember football with the vibrating yeah the the vibrating the table, table right and you yeah. would turn it on was that popular how, for you or was that yeah. for us that oh, was yeah. for you yeah and then you would you had a kicker that would try to kick the the cotton ball <laughs> oh my god and look how look at how sophisticated it is today Super we're actually pro players actually play it's play leagues. Those games. There's right. leagues now. There's there, leagues. Yeah, right? yeah. They get paid to play and get sponsors and everything. It's a people have petitioned to have it in the Olympics and stuff yeah. as like a Olympic sport. But when you were back in the day, I want to know because really what's old is new again, right? So a lot of things that happened back in your day, which are more probably hands-on games. I mean, you had arcades. Arcades. We did, you know, games. yeah. Uh, uh Sebastian was talking about this the other day. Uh, it was uh, Pac-Man. Oh yeah, Pac-Man. So I grew up uh, uh, when we used to go down the shore, the Jersey Shore, because we I grew up in Jersey with mom, uh, with uh, Nana and Papa. We would go down the shore, and the shore had besides the the carnival rides and all of that, they had what were called arcades, and they had skee ball where you you were oh, bowling. Ski-ball. They still have that. Yeah. They still have that today in the arcades. Pinball was a big uh, pinball games were a big thing. They're like much a physical more, machine they, like that. Yeah, they're much more sophisticated, and you got to score a lot more points. But they give you a lot more points because I think people want to. They want hundreds of thousands as opposed to twenty and thirty. Uh, so pinballs were, uh, were big, and then 
the electronics started coming in with uh, Pac-Man and I still remember. So that was, that was big, but that was part of the uh, arcade. And there are, there are some arcades uh, around now, I believe. There are, uh, there are there, remember, for the younger generation, I would say that's yeah. something that they kind of go to to have more of like a social aspect. I mean, right. there's Dave and Buster's, which is more of the adult, the adult yeah arcades <laughs> well they have they have golf you could play golf you could yeah, play they baseball call, yeah ball. they have a at vr for me has really changed the game like vr when it came out four or five years ago and uh -huh. that's what sebastian makes games on and we had to test it out that really the future of it i'm very excited for with augmented reality as well uh, i just think it's so funny to come from playing a tabletop you know where the floating the floating football players are going to having your literal world augmented in front of your eyes with a game yeah. it's just crazy yeah. the hey the other thing uh, that mom did every christmas with you guys is uh puzzles puzzles oh, were also big puzzles that's right they elizabeth were big loves the puzzles elizabeth yeah loves they the were puzzles. they were big back in my mom and dad's day and i think when they were kids mm -hmm. because it was pretty inexpensive remember coming out of the depression and out of world war ii and those things there wasn't a lot to be had so it was really getting around the table and it was meant more games i think back in my day we're more about family and getting together. I think it's progressed now, like you're talking about virtual reality, you have competition. competition. I mean, I, I don't remember so much competition, although mom would always talk about Uno. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there was competition. Daddy. Yeah, there was competition, but uh, it, it seemed Penny to be- Annie, a, Penny Annie, yeah, cards Penny and Annie, Penny Annie, Penny Annie, Bap, bap, her dad would play Penny Annie. We would do it for hours of fun and you know those kinds of things. And I think that, uh, I think it's a little bit less of that. And I think it's much more competitive now. It's uh, groups, you know, the, what do they have? International, they play international. Yeah, they have international competitions now. Yeah. So, anyway, that's. But uh, there's still family games. We try, whenever Sebastian and I come to the house, we always try yeah. to bring a new board game that the family can kind of play. I yeah. also tend to prefer cooperative games more than competitive games. Even though when yeah. we were growing up, I think the longest running game in Monopoly was like a month in the summer or yeah. something like that when we were growing yeah. up. But yeah, they still have them. Always, they still have them. Yeah, and you always like to win, but that's. I was story. always the bank because <laughs> I knew the banks always win. <laughs> well, and you, were, and you, were good, you were good with maths, so we so, so we thought. <laughs> so we thought. So we thought. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's good. So if you have a generational difference in growing up or in career, so we were talking about our work, you know, first jobs and what kind of led us into our working careers, or differences in school fashion, gaming, you have some kind of generational difference that you want us to talk about or you want to tell us about, tag us in videos on Instagram at Boom Millennial. On Instagram, tag us, we'll repost it, we'll talk about it, comment on any of the videos on there. We want to hear from you. So right. I loved it. I love this discussion. And we have a new segment. We have a new segment we want to introduce. Isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and I have to give credit to Arsenio Hall, who was a, a comedian, had a TV show. And uh, he's, in my mind, he started this thing called Things That Make You Go, hmm. hmm. So that, that'll be our segment, if, if that's good for you. Credit yeah. where credit is due. I love that. I love that. We are all about hashtag credit uh, here right. and giving credit right. where it's due. I would love it. So tell us, so things that make you go, hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me about so I have, to, I have to read this because I want to make sure I get this right. So there was a, uh, an episode on, on YouTube where a professor was teaching his class about punctuation. And he, had, he separated the, the men and the women. And the, okay. phrase, the phrase was, a woman without her man is nothing. Okay. A woman no without punctuation. No, no punctuation. punctuation. So okay. he had the men, the male group, submit theirs. And their punctuation was a woman, comma, without her man comma is nothing oh and then, which is basically a woman is nothing if you took out the things in between the commas yeah that's that's correct mm. so then he mm. uh had the, the female audacity the audacity <laughs> <laughs> yeah he so then had say? The, <laughs> and then he had the, yeah he had the female uh group submit theirs and they said in their punctuation a <laughs> woman exclamation point Without her, comma, a man is nothing. Man is nothing. <laughs> Dang! That's that clapback. That's that clapback oh. that I like to see. Wow. 
and that's just the power of punctuation people hashtag lawyered on that i'm a big fan of the oxford comma and so is the judicial system so always remember your commas matter yeah commas and matter. Fun, yeah <laughs> punctuation matters well you know it's it's <laughs> Uh, so number five, uh, we're done, right? And done. Uh, we, but I, I think we should uh, we should acknowledge our cast of thousands. Yeah, <laughs> our th everyone that goes into making this podcast possible. Uh, it's really fun. So uh, the music is by uh, Julian, right? Julian, Julian Alvarez, 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 also my brother-in-law, aka yeah. Nocturnal Fix Music. Nocturnal Fix Music, great. And then uh, editing, you, uh, you've you had a very close friend of yours also on your board. Yes, yeah, she also does um, all my social media, RP Branding Studio with Rosella Papale. Thank uh -huh. you for all the editing genius that you do for the podcast. Yeah, she does. She, she makes us look better than we are. <laughs> she really does. She's just like, yeah. I'm like, like, did I have a glow up? It's crazy. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, uh, if it wasn't for Melissa and Stephanie and you, I would have never gotten into this at all. Uh, and they're with millennial women, right? Millennial women talk. So Melissa and Stephanie Carcanche are a sister duo. So like we're a father daughter duo. They're a sister duo. And one Melissa is uh, she, you know, was on Disney, Nickelodeon, TV star, sister Stephanie, recording artist, international recording artist. They created Millennial Women Talk, which is a podcast where they they meet and discuss different topics relating to millennials. Yeah. And they talked at my virtual conference for my nonprofit about launching a podcast, which is something we had been talking about for right. a bit, but we hadn't gotten it down yet. And so we hired them as our coaches. I was like, what do we got to do? What do we got to do to get you to help us launch this podcast? And then they met you and they're like, oh my God, you guys have to do a podcast. So they've been amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been terrific. So I think uh, until uh, uh, next time uh, you do the outro. Well, right? you want me until next time I'll do the outro. <laughs> until next time, intro coming soon and outro later. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, woo, episode five. Five, five, stay alive. Golf, <laughs> golf clap. Golf clap. Golf yeah. clap. <laughs> yes, episode five. Thank you so much to our hashtag podcast familia. We do this because we like it and we love it and we want to create uh, the gaps, you know, bridging the generational gaps, one joke at a time, I feel like, one talk at a time. So we love it. We love coming here every week. Again, let us know at Boom Millennial on Instagram if you have any topics or anything you'd like to discuss or any, any thoughts on the episode. We want to meet you. We want to talk with you. And we thank you for being part of our podcast, Familia. I'm Lauren Marscano, Networking Maverick. This is my Faja, Tom Mano, the Faja, the boomer perspective here on Boom Millennial. Looking good and sharp, by the way, I should say. Thank uh, you. And until next time, boom. 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 <laughs>